Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a video that I did not expect the outcome of but today we were sent over the RX 7600 by MSI this is the OC version the two fan 8 gigabytes VRAM and they were kind enough to actually send me this make this video and also keep which is actually insane because I'm looking at doing a separate PC as a sort of a budget PC for streaming and if ever I need to do more tests and stuff I'm not really using my main PC for that so it's nice of them to send this over and also give me a little hookup but today's video is all about testing this against a card from 2016. Now a little bit of a backstory, when I first got my PC, I spec'd it out, I went pre-build, and I added two Titan XP's 2016 versions with 12 gigabytes VRAM. This baby's only eight gigabytes, so I do see there is gonna be a slight limitation. Now I am only rocking the one Titan XP these days, the other one I sold, because a lot of games stopped SLI bridging, and even then, Two Titan XP's was just overkill. I only needed one. I still only need one. So it's going to be a good test to see which one of these is going to come out on top. Now, obviously, this is a budget friendly graphics card, but it does also have the extra kick with having the RX in there, unlike the Titan XP, which is the GTX. So it doesn't have any of the ray tracing systems and all of that stuff, even though you can get it on there. I guess the RTX and the RX versions are just more built for optimization with ray tracing and all of that stuff. So what we're gonna do is start off with a benchmarking test. Now I've already run these in the background so we'll just go over some of the actual screenshots that I've saved from the records coming from each card. We went over a 4K optimize on each card and also a 1080p high on each card. Now online it does say the RX 7600 is similar or almost comparable to a 4060. I don't know how much I believe of that, but if you have a 4060 and you can see some sort of similarities with the FPS and things like that, let me know in the comments below because it'd be quite cool to see if that's actually true or not. Now, I get it, you know, this is an eight gigabyte card, mine is a 12 gigabyte card, so when we do go over this, there is gonna be some limitations on each of them, but for the 2023 card, I expect to see quite good results from this. So we'll go over to the screenshots and talk about each of these individually. But we also did a test on CS2, Valorant, and Tom Clancy's Wildlands, which is quite a big game. So it was good to see the comparison between the both. So now let's move over to the screenshots. And what you can see is side by side of 4K. Then we'll go over to the 1080p in a second. But as you can see, the 4K, the left side is the Titan, the right side is the RX. And coming out on top straight away, you can see the Titan is kicking up a storm with an extra 1,150 odd points with a minimum FPS of 47 and a maximum of 82. Now, unfortunately on the RX, the GPU temperatures and usage didn't come up at all. So we can't really go over this, but you know, with the Titan, it does tell you the temps of the min and the max. But anyway, we're going over the main things as the FPS throughout the whole benchmarking test. And it's close when it comes to the minimum FPS, because on the RX here, you've got 45.59, and then the maximum is 65.16. So on the Titan, you are gonna get that, that little extra 20 FPS almost in the maximum settings on 4K. Now moving over to the 1080p, which apparently the RX is a 1080p beast. This is on 1080p high, and again, the Titan just took storm. I get it, as I said before, the Titan is a 12 gigabyte card, where the RX is eight gigabytes, but being that newer card, you'd expect a little bit more from this. So the Titan coming in with 13,672 points, where the RX came in with 12,701. Big difference again, with almost 1,000 plus points on that. Then we're looking at the FPS of a minimum of 75 and then a maximum of 153, where on the RX, we were down to 71. So similar again with the minimum, but then the maximum only at 118, which was quite shocking to be that low on the maximum settings in 1080p. Yet this card again is meant to be a 1080p horse. Moving over to the gameplay here, this is all in 180 hertz by the way, but I found that in CSGO 2, we're gonna start side by side here, as you can see, starting with CS2 at 180 hertz, both games at the exact same settings and all of that. On the main menu, 120 FPS was the maximum on both, both cards, both settings. I don't know if that's just their clock speed in the main menu just to give everyone the same FPS I don't know but then when it came into game we had a minimum on the RX of 116 FPS and on the Titan a minimum of 122 FPS now I went onto a map that had a lot going on so we could really judge how the cards would benefit from having certain 
items or certain lighting and so forth so we did go on a, a map that had quite a few bits in there it was shocking to see the maximum frames on the rx at 170 and then the maximum on the titan at 220. i mean it's not a huge jump but it's still significant now this is without any v-sync or anything capping the frame rate but if it was capped they probably both would be around 180 obviously being at 170 it's still close enough so it's still playable don't get me wrong then we're moving over to valorant actually it surprised me a little bit more so within the main menu there wasn't a fps counter so i couldn't actually tell what the fps was for each card but when we went into the shooting range minimum frames on the rx were coming in at 176 and on the titan at 240 which was crazy and then maximum on the rx was 480 which is a really good outcome to be fair that's in full settings and all of that stuff but then on the titan obviously you do get the extra at 590 which is again another 100 almost in frames that you're going to get from a 2016 card and we'll actually go over the price of them at market value after all this but on worldlands this is where i really didn't joy playing on the rx now when it came to the menu they were both sitting at 60 fps again i think that's capped just to keep it as smooth as possible when it came into game though on the rx we were getting a minimum of 30 fps which is pretty much just bearable but it still had some spikes in there that were you know cutting in and out and then on the titan we were getting a minimum of 68 which is actually playable and by the way we are in the biggest city on this game so it's all jam-packed and the maximum fps we could only hit on the rx was 75 fps now it's still playable yes but with the lag spike it became unplayable at some points i just i couldn't get on with it and then with the maximum on the titan coming in at 85 frames per second so obviously looking at that the titan xp has literally taken the game and just won out of every single benchmark possible but now let's actually look at price and see if it's worth it being a 2016 card and a gtx because i mean i've posted before on tiktok and people have been like <laughs> imagine running a gtx yeah but when my gtx outperforms your rx or rtx card why would I then go and upgrade? Do you know what I'm saying? So let's look at the price. I'll get my phone up here so we can get exact market value right now. And starting off with the RX 7600. So coming from Amazon, well the card that I have is the MSI Radeon RX 7600 Mech 2x Classic in this silver colorway. And this is coming up on Amazon at £318. Okay, that's brand new by the way. Now we're going to go over and have a look at a Titan XP 2016 12GB, just so I can find the right one. Now for the Titan, I can't find one brand new, but I found a refurbished one in CEX for £175. So when it comes down to the price and you're looking at the AMD for 318 or a Titan at 175 I know which one that I'd be going for. Now again... Obviously, this is going to be the newer card. It is brand new, but they have the exact same ports. They're running the same memory. They both work on the same motherboards. There's nothing really different about these cards, apart from the Titan just kicked its ass. Now, don't get me wrong. This is going to work better on certain elements of games, so shaders and RTX, all that stuff. But when it comes down to price-wise, this, for what you're getting, you can easily double your FPS with a Titan from 2016 so there you have it the titan xp from 2016 just outdone not only on price but on performance and fps in games even 4k playing it just outdone the msi rx 7600 but don't get me wrong i'm still gonna enjoy playing on this and whacking it into a budget build but that's the honest truth this card didn't hold up to the standard i expected but don't hate, it's still a fantastic card. If you are rocking this card, I still respect it. I'm rocking a GTX. Yes, I know it's better, but still, we're not going to go there. You're rocking a good card, end of. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions about the card, or if you want me to do any more tests that might give it a bit more of a beneficial use towards the RTX side of this, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate MSI for sending this out. And if you haven't already, leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any further uploads from here on out. 
And always remember, capture, create, captivate, and I'll see you all in the next video.